Hello guys and welcome to Program Arost. Today we're going to talk about how to write tests for an abstract class. Suppose you have a problem which has a common case and it varies a little bit depending on the concrete case. For example, you have cats and dogs and each of them has a unique sound depending on the animal. So cats make the meow sound and dogs make the wolf sound. Uh, and they make the sound only if they are fed with uh, their favorite food. But the cats also make the sound uh, if they are uh, uh, pets. So you're supposed to find a solution for this problem. There are two solutions that I can think of uh, right away. And one is uh, composition, which means to make the common behavior in, a, in one object and use this object uh, inside the other object which uh, only implements the specific behavior. There is also another solution which is inheritance and let's assume you picked the, the inheritance uh, solution and you now want to unit test your uh, solution. So today I'm going to talk about how to write the unit tests for the abstract class uh, along with the concrete cases of that class. So let's implement our solution before we test it. So we have an animal class, which is the base class for all our animals, and it will be an abstract class. Abstract class. Uh, and it is abstract because I will have abstract getter for the sound. and uh, abstract getter for the favorite foods okay uh, so the sound is the sound the animal makes and the favorite foods uh, are the favorite foods of that animal so let's make a class dog which extends the animal and it has a get sound which is turn woof and it has favorite foods which is and uh, let's make it meat and a bone okay and we have Expert class cat extends animal and it has the sound and it has the sound meow and the uh, favorite foods. So it uh, likes to eat milk, drink milk, and cream. My god, the construction site is making a lot of noise. Okay, so this is the base class, and these are the concrete classes of the dog and the cat. So let's implement the common behavior. Come on. Stop it. Uh, with uh, feeding, I'm gonna feed it with some, with some food, and it will return a sound uh, if it likes the food, and if it doesn't like the food, it will return now. Just for the sake of the example, you can implement other stuff. Okay, so if uh, this favorite foods index of food it exists. So if the food is inside the favorite foods, uh, I'm gonna return this sound. Otherwise, I'm gonna return no. Okay, so if the animal likes the food it's fed with, it makes a sound, otherwise it uh, doesn't make any sound. So this is the common behavior. And now, what's going on? A lot of noise today. And now, I'm gonna implement the pet method 
okay, which also will return a string only for the cat, and it will return a perp sound for petting. Okay, so once again, I have an animal class with sound and favorite foods, and if the animal is fed with the food it likes, it makes the sound, otherwise it doesn't, and the dog only extends the animal class, meaning it has this uh, behavior, and the cat also has this uh, behavior, but it also has a behavior of when it's pet, it makes a sound. Now you want to write a unit test for uh, these classes. One approach is creating some kind of a stub class uh, that derives from animal, implement a sound and a favorite foods inside the test, uh, and uh, test it depending on the sound and the food uh, and the favorite foods uh, within the test. But uh, if you do it this way, you will have to decide uh, when you're testing the dog and the cat classes what you're uh, gonna do. Either you're not gonna test the common behavior at all for the dog and the cat, meaning that if uh, meaning that you trust the animal behavior, but you're not uh, sure the dog doesn't do anything uh, to uh, tamper with this behavior, for example, if uh, for some reason, instead of sound here, or instead of favorite foods here, uh, of an array, I'm gonna return a null, it will tamper with the uh, behavior of the common case, because these favorite foods will be actually null, and uh, it will throw an error. So, if you're not testing the feed function of the dog, uh, it may actually be a bad idea because the concrete class may tamper with the common behavior as well. So, if you're choosing not to test it, this is the consequences that you're getting. Now, you might choose to test the common behavior for the dog and the cat and the abstract class we tested before, uh, now you're having uh, three parts of the code testing the same behavior, uh, which is actually a duplication of code, and uh, it will be harder to maintain, uh, because if you change the common behavior of the feed, you'll have to uh, update three places for it uh, to behave properly, and uh, it's code duplication with all the code duplications, uh, bad things you probably already know. So this is one approach. Another approach is you can say, okay, I'm not gonna test any abstract class. I'm only gonna test the dog and the cat classes uh, for all the behavior, uh, the common behavior and the not common behavior. This way you have not two, uh, three uh, duplications, but only two duplications, uh, which is better, but still you can do much better. Now I'm gonna show you a third approach of how to test it uh, and uh, test also the common behavior and test for each of the classes, the cat and dog classes, and not duplicating your code. The way I'm gonna do it is actually I'm gonna create a test, okay, a test suit for the abstract class, the animal class, uh, and I'm not gonna run it, I'm only gonna implement it with the parameter of the animal, and I'm gonna run it for each of the concrete types of the dog and the cat. I will have a function. Okay, before I'm gonna show you how I'm testing it, I'm just gonna say that uh, I'm not gonna use any specific testing uh, library, uh, like uh, Mocha or, uh, I don't know, other uh, that you're familiar with, uh, simply because I'm just uh, showing a point and it doesn't matter which uh, library you're using, uh, Mocha or QUnit, I don't know, uh, you can do it in each of them uh, by generating the tests. So I'm gonna uh, write semi-tests for the... Um, for the and uh, output the results to the console, just to show you the example here. So let's create a function, test animal, and it will receive animal, which is an animal. Animal. Okay, and what it will do, it will actually uh, run a test animal should make sound with the animal and test animal should not 
make sound animal. Okay, so what the test animal should make sound will be? It will be a function which receives also an animal. And what it does, <coughs> it actually iterates all the favorite foods of the animal. Animal, okay, let's make those public. Favorite foods for each food. Okay, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a sound which is animal uh, feed with the food and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna ensure the sound makes is the sound uh, it's supposed to make so I'm gonna just log it console log uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. <sighs> should make sound I don't know should make Okay, when fed with favorite food, should make sound. Let's make it this and this. Make sound uh, uh, uh. animal dot sound. And it is gonna be true if the sound it made is equal to the animal dot sound. Okay. Now I'm gonna test the other the other thing. Function animal animal. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna fit it with some uh, other. Uh, I don't know some unknown food. Let's make it const sound will be animal dot feed with uh, I don't know unknown food. Uh, and what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna console log uh, when fed with. Uh, unknown food should not make sound and it is true if the sound is null. So again test animal receives an animal and calls the test animal should make a sound and test animal should not make a sound. The test animal should make a sound loops over all the favorite foods and feeds it to the animal and if the uh, sound is the expected sound of the animal it will be true, otherwise it will be false, and the test animal should not make sound, uh, feeds the animal with some unknown food, and expects it to return a no. So now, after writing the tests for the animal, for the common case, let's write the tests for the concrete cases of dog and cat. You can notice that even though I wrote the tests for the animal, I didn't run them. I only creating the, created the functions which are supposed to test it, but I'm not running them. So now I'm gonna create and run, <coughs> sorry, I'm gonna create and run the tests for the dog and the cat. So let's create a function test dog and it will write uh, testing dog. Okay, I'm gonna create a dog and I'm gonna test the dog with an animal. The dog doesn't have any concrete uh, specific behavior, so I'm only interested in, in testing the dog as an animal. Now I'm gonna run it, test dog, and when I run it, uh, it will run actually the tests for the base class of the animal. And let's create the test cat as well and I'm gonna log the testing cat 
I'm gonna create a new cat and I'm gonna test animal for the cat. Now I'm gonna write a specific cat test for the pet method. Yes, so I'm gonna write cat specific test. And now I'm gonna see the sound the cat makes when it is pet. And I'm gonna ensure that when pet the cat should make a sound. And it is sorry, and it is true if the sound is equal to uh, how many hours did I have in the cat? hours so it will be true <coughs> like this and I'm gonna run the test cat method so now I'm gonna compile it okay and now I'm gonna write source okay node source testing abstract case let's see okay so now it's testing dog uh, when fed with favorite food should make sound wolf true uh, true, okay, let's make it when fed with instead of favorite food, I'm gonna write it the food I'm gonna compile it again just to see it clearly run it again, okay, when fed with meat should make some wolf true when fed with bone should make some wolf true when fed with a known food, should not make should no should not make sound that's true also. And for the cat as well, uh, I'm having the cases true true true, and the specific case for the cat is also true. So now you can see I am testing the common behavior for each individual uh, concrete type of the animal, uh, but I'm not duplicating any code. I wrote the common tests only once but I'm running them uh, for each of the uh, concrete types. You have watched an episode about how to test an absolute class. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more programming tips videos by clicking over here, or you can try to YouTube to know what you really like by clicking over here. If you want to watch other code-related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you later on Programmarist.